welcome to another episode of Curtain Calls, behind the scenes of BIM House with Jazz Orchestra of the Concertgebouw. Today, we're going to talk about something that I've never really understood myself, conducting an orchestra. Do we just wave around with our hands? Do we just, is there a feeling? Is there emotion? Is there, how does, how does this work anyway? I don't know, but we're going to talk to some people that do. musician since I was on stage I think at least a decade but here I am actually in, with all this stuff in front of me as well I'm meeting the conductor of the jazz orchestra of the Concertgebouw here at Bimhuis in Amsterdam to talk about the McNeely project and to talk about the special relationship that this project has to conducting and also what is conducting how does this work anyway Rob so yes. nice to meet you Nice to meet you too, Aleta. Hi, so um, can you tell me, let's start from the top, what is conducting? How does this work? Uh, conducting is wiggling with your hands and, uh, and trying to make something clear to the orchestra. Okay, but if I just stand here like this, then, then something happens or, or is well, there like a move well, we, for we, faster or louder? There, or? There's a big difference. You have, you have uh, like classical music mm -hmm. where a uh, conductor uh, does a lot, yeah. and uh, classical orchestra always has a conductor. Yeah. Uh, but you, we are a jazz orchestra, yeah. and with the jazz orchestra, um, sometimes you do have a conductor, sometimes you don't have a conductor. Right. So that's that. It's different. Mm -hmm. um, in jazz, you have uh, like a, a set tempo usually, yeah. so you don't have to conduct. Right. Because you have a drummer. Yeah, we have a drummer, so you don't have to do very much except when there are a lot of odd measures, and then it's just to help the musicians where everything is and to be just to be clear and to make uh, the musicians feel more secure about all the stuff right. they are playing and where, where we are in the music. And okay. So that's, that's what I do. Uh, so that's a lot of multitasking. Yeah, and, and you also try to, to um, do something with, with the volume mm -hmm. if you want to, if you want to play them softer or louder or yeah. do exaggerate a little bit some stuff, then you, you, that's you, you're going to do. And also in soloing, yeah. when somebody is soloing, then often you have like an open solo piece, so yeah. they can play whatever they want. Yeah. And then at some point, the backgrounds have to come in. So I have yeah. to think, okay, where is he in the solo? And she, uh, is it time for the backgrounds or not? Or so and that you have to decide on the moment and then you cue the band in to... Wow. Uh, so it's intense in. multitasking. Most of all, it's it's enjoying because I have the m most beautiful place in front of the orchestra, and I, I yeah. really enjoy what what uh, fr from the band. It's, so it's really great. Yeah, it sounds like a beautiful job.
tonight uh, the, the concert is going to be conducted. Yeah. But on you will release an album of uh, materials that are specifically composed and arranged by McNeely for the jazz orchestra, and that will not be conducted. Uh, right. Why is that? What's the difference? Like, how does this work? Uh, well, the orchestra that he's working with mostly, uh, most of the time, is mm -hmm. uh, the Fingered Orchestra, and they don't have a conductor either. Mm -hmm. uh, <coughs> since this band has so much experience and so many experienced players, uh, it's nicer that uh, Jim, I mean, he's gonna conduct from distance in a way because we're gonna record with him mm -hmm. while he's in, at home. Yeah. Uh, but he can listen and also uh, say things and uh, correct things. And yeah. So I mean, it's uh, it's not completely without conductor, but there's no not someone else because if we have someone else, then you get another personal opinion, and then the music would change. Maybe. Yeah, of course. Um, I've heard that actually, uh, when you are in a big band without a conductor, you as a drummer are the conductor. Is that? Do you feel that? Well, I'm always the conductor together with the conductor. What does that mean? Um, well, he has a certain ID, I see that, and I try to incorporate it for the whole group. Right. But maybe sometimes I think different and I do something different also. <laughs> I think we have to talk about what conducting actually means, especially for, for audiences that are not musicians. We have to explain what is conducting, what does it mean? It's all about the vibe, energy, dynamics, uh, tempo, uh, that you know where you are, also sometimes people get lost in lo yeah. big parts, so that's, yeah, that kind of things. So. How do you, but how do you translate that? How do you, because you know, people that don't make music and that don't play in big bands just see some guy waving at an audience or at a, at a group of musicians. And what does that mean? Do you have gestures or something or? Yeah, yeah, there are all kinds of gestures and everybody does it different, so. Really? Yeah. Um, but you can do it even with the smallest uh, gestures. I mean, if, if you see Gergiev, who's a famous classical mm -hmm. director, he can let the start the musicians by just doing this, and then they start. And then they know what to do. Yeah. So but it's a very personal thing. Yeah, very. episode of Curtain Calls Behind the Scenes of Bim House Amsterdam with the Jazz Orchestra of the Concertgebouw. Today we've talked about the art of conducting. I have definitely learned a lot. And next week at 8 o'clock sharp we'll be back and we'll talk to some more musicians and we'll figure out how, what it's really like. You know, online gigs, how does that even feel? Streams, how does that work? Join me next week at 8 o'clock again, same place, same time. I can't wait. See you then. Thank <laughs> you.